In this review, we're looking at a model of a Chinese mobile crane rated at 1200 tons capacity. It is the XCMG XCA1200, and the model is made by Yagao, and unusually for a Chinese model, the maker's name appears on the box. So we open the box and out comes some large expanded polystyrene trays, and the first thing we can do is cut the tape to open the top lid. As we see, there are many parts wrapped in soft paper, and when we take off the top tray, we can see all the bigger parts of the model in the bottom tray. All we need now is some big hand cranes to carefully lift out the parts. Included with the model is this instruction sheet which is printed in English on one side and in Chinese on the other. But this is the Chinese version of the model so the heavy lift head is not included. And to be honest, the instructions are not great. For the assembly we'll just get the model ready for the road and we need to insert the big pistons into the main boom rams. There are four mirrors which have to be fitted and three of them fit well, but the one above the passenger door needs some sticky stuff to fix it. Next we have a couple of engine covers to fix, and they are nicely held in place with tiny magnets. Now we're not too sure which way round the crane travels when it's on the road, but we'll turn it with the crane cab facing forwards. The large and very heavy boom is a separate part. But included in the box are a couple of plastic supports which you can rest the boom on. And if you've got a high enough capacity trailer, you can pose the boom travelling on it. And then that gives you a nice display configuration of the model in transport mode. We start underneath with the detail and the model is very good, and there is detailing of the transmission components. Each of the axle assemblies is also detailed, and the tread pattern on the tyres is good. The carrier cab has got a rack on the roof, and the windscreen wipers are nice and thin. The lights look convincing, and there's also a mesh tread plate on the steps. There are lots of small graphics along the side of the body, and they show the nice XCMG decoration. The tyres have got branding in the side walls. Moving to the centre of the carrier, and the detailing is high with more tiny graphics. And the toothed slewing ring is also modelled. At the back there are a couple of access ladders, and you can see the detailing on the outrigger posts. But the outrigger pistons can't be retracted much. The engine area behind the cab looks good with different textures, and it's good to see highlighted small components. The cab has got a large protection grille on the roof, there are wipers and the handrails seem both a little thick and a little high. However the outrigger arrangement is really nice with all metal parts, and that includes the pads and spreader plate. Tiny graphics add to the detail. The counterweights are made up of separate slabs and they've all highlighted with graphics. And an option you can install is a luffing winch. It has rope on the drum but the pulleys are not reeved up. The main boom rams are of heavy metal construction, and hydraulic hoses and pipes add to the detailing. Hydraulic hoses also run to the support legs on the boom. Other boom details include spooling drums, and at the boom head there are chevron graphics and metal pulleys. The intermediate sized hook block is an all metal part, and the same is true of the large block. They both have free rolling metal pulleys. The superlift arrangement looks convincing with flexible metal straps, and the detailing of the arms is good with sharp graphics. The lattice flyjib is a metal part and it's made up of separate pieces which are bolted together. It also has delicately detailed mesh walkways. Starting underneath and each axle has independent steering, and on most of them the angle that you can achieve is very good. It's also good to see that there's independent sprung suspension on every axle. Out on the test track the big XCMG rolls smoothly, and the steering has enough stiffness to not be flapping about. 
With the steering set, you can get a nice sharp turn. And if you really like crab steering, this model does well at that too. Let's take a look at the boom and the support legs can be rotated out and rotated down and then the feet unscrewed to lower the pads. Here the pads have been put on support blocks so that the boom is high enough and the transport can drive out. And if you do get the boom high enough, then the crane can drive in. But we will connect the boom in the good old fashioned way. And before we do that, we'll set up the outriggers. The crane cab can be rotated around from its transport position. And then we can open up the star formation of the outriggers. They are fully metal and they open easily and then you can extend them out telescopically. With the legs extended, we can then go to the next step, which is to add on the pads. And these get located onto the spreader plates. And the good thing about that is that it stops them sliding about. There's a small beam that spans between them and actually the pads have a magnet inside them too. The piston gets lowered in the normal way by unscrewing it and then it gets located into the transverse beam. This is all well engineered and gives a nice secure feeling. The outriggers can support the crane wheels free and they do that while remaining straight and without any bending. Incoming is the main boom and that gets located into its pivot point where there are a couple of large pins which hold it in place. Each pin has a locking clip to prevent it from sliding out. Next we can raise the boom a little so that we can attach the main boom rams and they get fixed with a pinned connection. With all the connections made you can set the boom at the angle that you want and then you tighten up a pair of grub screws on each ram. At this point one option is to add on the counterweight plate and we just offer it up using the giant hand forklifts and then it's secured by four steel pins. With the plate secured we can then load up the counterweight blocks and they are reasonably securely located on the plate. There is then an option to add on this little box and pin it into place or alternatively to all this we can locate a support piece on the carrier deck and then add the counterweight on as if we were self ballasting. The blocks can then be added as long as you keep it balanced on both sides. So if you wanted you could have this display of the crane loading its own counterweight. But we will proceed with the counterweight on and then add on some metal handrails. But these are a bit loose and easily knocked out. After that we need to get hooked up. So we'll take some rope off of the winch drum and run it over the top of the boom. So here we have a choice of a very large hook block or the smaller one and because we're lazy we'll put the smaller one on. One odd thing is that it looks like the rope on the drum is the wrong side but that could be unwound and corrected and it would look better. At least the winch drum is well engineered. You can insert a key and push against the spring and that does mean that the winch drum has a positive brake action so you could hang a decent load from the hook. The boom has got three locking points for each section and they just pull out in the usual way. It is all smooth but as you can imagine this is a very heavy piece of metal. So at long extensions you will need to have the boom at a reasonably steep angle. I mentioned earlier that the small box at the back of the crane was an option and if you don't want that you can replace it with a luffing winch assembly. This comes as a separate part in the box and you locate it and pin it with four steel pins. But obviously there is no luffing fly jib in the box. Let's look at some of the other smaller features and as we've seen before there are a couple of removable covers which allow us to see the engine. And if we move to the crane cab it can tilt a little. It also has another feature which is a sliding cab door. There's a bit of a technique to get it open but after some training it can be done. And if opening doors is your thing, you can also open the cab doors on the carrier. They open to about a 45 degree angle and the mechanism is fairly stiff. OK, back to the crane and we'll now add the super lift. And there's no information about how these get reeved up, so we'll have to do some guesswork. We've run the rope under the super lift and then reeved up and finished up with an awkward tying off point. Next, we can attach the strap to the end of the super lift beam. And that's a pinned connection. Before we can attach the super lift, we have to add the guide trays for the straps. And there are six parts to attach, and then we can add on the super lift beams. 
Each one is held in place by a pin at the top and a pin at the bottom. And then we can attach the other end of the straps to the boom. These connections are made by tiny brass nuts and bolts using the tools supplied. If we want to use the super lift we need to open up the beams. And we set them at roughly right angles to the boom. Then we connect up the end of the super lift winching system to the boom top. And that's another job for tiny brass nuts and bolts. Once the system is all connected up you can wind in on the super lift winches using a key. And that tensions it all up. Then to get the maximum capacity you spread the arms out. There is another option for the model which is to attach the included fixed flyer jib. And to do that we have to remove the top section of the telescopic boom. Then the fly jib gets offered up to the connection points. And we can have some more fun with tiny nuts and bolts. Next we bolt up and unfold the support system. And we connect the super lift directly to it. We then have a choice of hook blocks. The single line is a bit underpowered so we'll go back to the intermediate block. This is a very big model so let's get out the tape and do a dim check. With the main boom fully extended it reaches a height of 81 inches or 207 centimeters and with the fly jib that increases to about 91 inches or 230 centimeters. An unusual feature of the real crane is that it can travel with the fly jib attached and by unbolting some connections the fly jib becomes hinged. As it folds back it then becomes engaged on a hydraulic ram and it folds right up. It wouldn't travel like this on the road but it could travel between locations on a site. This is a very large and impressive model by Yagao. The XCMG crane itself is not well known outside China, but many aspects of it are familiar. It has got some nice detailing and most of the functionality is very good, and overall the model has just enough going for it to be considered excellent.